<laughs> hey guys, I had a little bit of technical difficulties over here, so please forgive me. I am here. Welcome everybody to Jamaicans.com. Your host, Deborah Johnson of My Temple Wellness. I'm really happy to be out here with you guys um, today. Uh, so as you come in, guys, let me know where you're watching from. I also would love for you to share this video on your page so that people can uh, know that we are here talking about, um, what are we talking about today, guys? <laughs> What are we talking about today, guys? What's our show about? Understanding total wellness. It's gonna be a great show. It's gonna be a great show. I'm gonna spend one minute on recap uh, on what we talked about last week. Uh, last Monday, we talked about obesity and COVID. And so today, I wanna- um, Welcome, everybody. Hang on a second, guys. To Jamaican nice. stuff. Okay. All right, yeah. So I want to make sure that those of you who were not here last week, please go back and watch what you missed last week. I think that would be the best way to do it. Um, I'll just throw up a slide of some new information that I got that I wanted to share with you guys, some recent updates on things that you guys should know about. So guys, where are you watching from? Where are you guys coming in from? Let me check the comments. Hello, J J JV, am I saying that right, JV? <laughs> um, Good to have you guys out here today. All right, guys. Um, so yeah, share the video. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, so guys, my brand is called My Temple Wellness and my slogan is the body's a temple. So this is this is a temple right here. And so we have to care for it as such. Um, this is really my message that I always try to get folks to try to, um, to think about uh, is to uh, not this one, <laughs> sorry. This is what my brand is about, right? So I provide nutrition and wellness services to individuals and organizations. I haven't been on this platform in a minute in this on this um, stream yard thingy. But so yeah, guys, follow me on social media. This is my social media handles. And if you follow me there, you get to see some of the things that I'm doing outside of Jamaicans.com and you can uh, get recipes and just see a little bit more about my lifestyle, right? Uh, this is my website. So if you guys want to uh, go get some more information, learn more about what uh, I do, you can go and check me out there. Okay, guys. So yeah, please share the video. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm gonna check the comments. So easy brain, uh, Brian from Nigeria. Hey, what's going on, Nigeria? I have some Nigerian friends. I, I, I don't know if I could get the accent right, so I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> but big up yourself, Nigeria. You don't know. Uh, we're all one people, right? Um, greetings from Jamaica, Annette. I think you were here last time. Good to see you, Miss Annette. Um, guys, so let me know where you're, where you're coming in from, all right? Okay, guys, so my name's Deborah Johnson. I am a plant-based nutritionist, plant-focused nutritionist. I focus my teaching and my education around us eating, you and me, all of us eating plants so that we can be, um, you know, live long, healthy lives. I believe in it because of my own story, because of what I've been through. And so that's what I generally talk about. I have a master's degree in nutrition. I have quite a few certifications and different things, but my focus seems to be around mental health, trauma, and things of that nature. So you'll find that some of my work uh, we'll get into mental health and, and stuff like that. I'm not a, a therapist, nor am I a medical professional in terms of um, not a medical doctor. Uh, however, I do have some qualifications um, when it comes to you know mental health, all right? And so uh, my passion is nutrition, my passion is food, cooking and all that stuff. You guys was in my kitchen last week. I have been extremely busy. And so I know I was supposed to come back and have us make the um, crepes and the Nutella and all that stuff. but please follow my channel, I will do it. It's just a matter of, I have to get it on my calendar. All right, guys, so today we're gonna be doing a, um, we're gonna spend some time talking about wellness, but I do want us to look at something else. Um, I'm gonna check the comments again before I get into everything. So Chad from Baltimore, what's up? What's up, Chad from Baltimore? We got Carrick Johnson in the house, we know who that is. Uh, he's on every week, <laughs> for the most part. 
<laughs> and then of course my friend from uh, Mr. Tony Kelly, who is tuning in from Birmingham, England. Uh, good to have you here, sir. Uh, good to see you too. Uh, lovely to have you guys all here. I just love all of my peoples. I wanna shout all of you guys out for coming on um, this evening. You're on because you care about your health. Uh, all right, and I and I I appreciate that, right? So I know that you're not tuning in just to hang out, although maybe you are. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but you're here. This thing is lopsided. Forgive me, guys. I'm sorry. The camera is backwards. Um, anyway, you're here because you care about your health, and so I'm happy that that you have decided to come here. Bobcat Traction, hello there, hello there, and Cultured Natural from Saint Croix. Big up you guys, sell from all over the world. I love it. Carrie Ann, greetings. Carrie Ann, where are you watching from? Let us know. And Miss Jennifer Bennett from Toronto. I love Toronto. One day I'm going to come up there because there's so many fans from Cor Toronto for, um, from Jama on Jamaicans.com. All right, guys. So as we go through today, I want you guys to put your questions in the chat box. I want you guys to uh, put your comments in the chat box. Don't leave me out here by myself, all right? As you're here watching, make sure you're going to talk to me back, all right? <laughs> so I want to hear from you guys. Okay, so let's jump right in. I'm going to attempt to put my PowerPoint up um, right now. And so we can jump right into the lesson. Uh, we're going to be done as soon as the PowerPoint is done. So if we're finishing half an hour, that's what it is. I'm not scheduled to be out here for, for too long, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All depends on how many questions you guys have and if you guys are talking back to me. All right, so let me try to get my, my PowerPoint up. So please bear with me as I go ahead and do that. I want to say cue Jeopardy music, but or one of those um <laughs> one of those um things, but I don't have any music to play for you guys. So just please put in the chat where you're watching from and share the video and so forth as I go ahead and do that. Take your time to do that for me right now. All right, guys, please go ahead and do that. Um, okay, let me try and share my screen. All right. All right, hang on a second. So yeah, guys, bear with me. This is this is live, live, live and direct. Okay, so y'all gotta have uh, be understanding of me here today. All right. Uh, play slideshow in window. That's what I want to do. Okay. And so now. Let me go ahead and share. So right up, right up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to share with you guys some statistics. It was one of the words that I struggle with, right? Statistics. Hang on a second. All right, guys. So you're looking at my screen and you're seeing a document. Uh, welcome to everybody else who's coming in the room, Walter. Uh, and Darama, Darami family, welcome, welcome guys. I'll be you guys up a little bit more after. Okay guys, so last week we talked about COVID and we talked about obesity. I wanted to bring this up because I was um, looking over some documents and I came across this and I wanted to bring it to you guys so that you can be aware. I'm actually gonna blow it up just a little bit more so you can see it. Feel free to take a photo of it. Um, that's totally fine. So you're looking at something that's talking about the underlining medical medical conditions uh, for pe of, of people who are having adverse issues with COVID. And so as you can see here by this diagram, you know, people with hypertension, folks with hypertension are the greatest, are at greatest risk. Okay. And I wanted to point it out because last week we were talking about obesity. And I know I definitely touched on the fact that, you know, if you have underlying issues, it's a lot more challenging for you when you go into the hospital. Uh, but I wanted to bring up this slide and just to show you guys a little bit about the different areas that you should be, um, you know, wanting to care for yourself and take care of yourself if you fall in any of these categories. Uh, obesity is here uh, with about 33%, diabetes complications around 32%. Right, so these are folks, and then heart disease is right there. So all these folks are folks with underlying medical condition that are going into the, the hospital, and they are, you know, running into issues. All right, 
so I don't, I, I know last week we had this conversation and it seemed as if, um, or maybe you, you didn't gather that, but I think some people might've walked away wondering, well, am I at risk if I'm obese? Yes, you, you are. However, if you have one of these other ailments, it also it really magnifies your, your chances of having uh, some, some issues when you do go to the hospital. So I want to encourage you guys really and truly, as I did last week, try to get control of your health. Uh, and so this week, my focus is really going to be to try to get you all to start thinking about other things that are playing a role in your health, right? So it's not just about, you know, um, eating, you know, your vegetables and going for walks, right? Because I'm always talking about eat your veggies, go for your walks. I'm always talking about that. However, guys, it's more than that, okay? It's your total wellness matters, okay? So it's not just about eating your veggies, although it's really important to eat your veggies, don't get me wrong, but it's also so important to understand what goes into your total wellness. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. So I want all of you guys to hang tight. Let's get through these slides together. Make sure you're putting in your questions and your comments, because I do wanna hear from you guys what you all think as we're talking about this, all right? So let's, let's go here. So our first, I have to figure out how to get this thing. Yeah, there we go. Much better. All right. So guys, understanding total total health. So I want us to have a look at this document here, right? This is uh, basically uh, a illness, illness wellness continuum. All right. And folks like myself who work in this, um, in this area of nutrition and health, uh, we look at something uh, like this. And what we're looking at and what we're always trying to ask folks about is, you know, where are you on this continuum, right? Because if you take a careful look, right, you know, health is not just about like the absence of an illness. It's not just the absence like, okay, so I don't have hypertension. I don't have diabetes. I don't have these other illnesses, but am I truly well? Am I, am I fully well? right? I might not be showing any signs or any symptoms. I might not be disabled here in the treatment side, but do I, I do I have awareness? Am I educated about, you know, uh, certain things, which we're going to educate ourselves today. Uh, and so I want us to think about the fact that we don't want to be in this neutral point right here. We really want to be here on the high level of wellness, okay? We want to not only become well, we want to get educated about our wellness. We want to become aware and we want to have a high level of wellness. And so today I want to help you guys to get to that high level of wellness. All right. And so wellness, guys, it's really the state of being in, a, in good health, especially as, you know, a, a, as a, a, a sorry, especially as an actively uh, pursued goal. So you want it to be something that you're pursuing on a consistent basis. It shouldn't just be something that you're like, all right, you know, I lost 20 pounds. I'm at my perfect weight. That's it. It's something you have to pursue consistently, and I'll say why in a second. Um, so it's also the act of practicing healthy habits on a daily basis to attain better physical, and this is the why, better physical and mental health outcomes. Because no matter how healthy you are, you're always, uh, I encourage you to always, you know, check to see if your physical health is, is really up to par, if your mental health is really up to par, and if you're really satisfied with that. Um, so instead of surviving you're really thriving okay so that means your your skin is nice and clean your nails are growing you know you're not you know uh showing other symptoms right of mental health um issues like lack of sleep and things like that so we want our wellness to be up right wellness is dynamic and it's ever evolving it's always mo always moving right and so it's something for us to stay consistent with and to stay uh abreast of right and so that irrespective of one's current state of health movement toward enhancing well-being can occur all right so we continue to thrive to get to the highest level of wellness today i'm going to be talking about um the eight different dimensions of wellness you guys might have already heard of this so today we're going to kind of delve into it if you haven't heard about it you're in for a treat it's going to be great to go through all of that stuff hey <laughs> Someone just got home. Now that you guys figure out who that is. Um, anyway, <laughs> like I said, we're live, so it is what it is, guys. All right. So the dimensions we're gonna talk, we're gonna touch on today are uh these eight. All right. We're gonna first talk about emotional wellness, right? And emotional wellness, guys, is really the ability to cope with stress, to express our emotions, and overall promote healthy relationships. Okay, so when we have good emotional stress, we're able to have good, healthy relationships. 
Um, in this dimension, it also includes the ability to be self-aware and be accepting of uh, pre-existing thoughts and behaviors. So we should be able to sort of like self-regulate, manage ourselves, manage our emotions, manage what's going on around us, be mindful. As you can see the little cartoon here, we're trying to get ourselves to be mindful, meaning thinking about what we're doing and what's happening in our world versus having a mind full of things happening, which is here, where it's just so much things and so much clutter in our mind. We can't really think straight when we're in that position, okay? So our emotional wellness is one of the wellness that I want you, and I want you guys to take notes. I want you guys to like write down on a piece of paper somewhere or on your phone, wherever you wanna put it, just put these down somewhere. So when you get off this live with, with me, you can go and say to yourself, "Am I emotionally well? Is this area?" And if I'm not, if I'm not um, touching on it, you know, properly, guys, feel free to ask questions because I'm, I already know it, so maybe I feel like I'm explaining it as clearly as I can. But if not, guys, just let me know and I can delve in some more. But it really involves the ability to cope with stress, right? This is what emotional wellness is. It's like being able to express your emotions and really an overall way of uh, promoting healthy relationships. So you have to look around and see, are my relationships healthy, right? Am I, am I existing in um, relationships that are not good for me? Um, and so I want you to think about that, right? Emotional wellness, that's number one. Let's move on because we have seven more to go. Um, we do have time, so it's not like a big rush. Environmental wellness. Now, when it comes to environmental wellness, we're really thinking of, it's just, it's sort of like being, being green, right? Or preserving nature, okay? That's really what we're thinking about when we're thinking about emotional well, uh, sorry, environmental wellness, right? But it's also promoting self-awareness and personal interactions with the environment, okay? So how are you in interacting with the environment? Um, you know, Jamaican people, most of us, you know, we are like from, from, my, from my perspective, from my life, my history, my background, I was raised in Jamaica, you guys know that, on a farm. And so I have that environmental, most of us have that environmental um, sort of like connection because some of us were, um, you know, going to Grong and digging yam or picking a tangerine. I used to have a tangerine tree in the back of my yard. I used to pick, we had an ackee tree, used to get down the ackee with the stick and everything like that. So I feel like, you know, living off the land, being a farmer and, cultivating the land and things like that, you tend to generally have a better vibe with the environment. But you know, nowadays we live in a country, we live in, I live in America, I don't know where you guys are all necessarily from. We're all in different places. Um, this idea of being green and really preserving nature is really important for us on the long run. And if you have children, you want to make sure that the environment is good for them. So having this environmental wellness um, con consciousness, being conscious of this environmental wellness um, is important. Okay. We see fires everywhere nowadays. Uh, my sister lives in Santa Barbara and there's always a fire happening out there in California. There's people in Greece right now dealing with fires. There's so many different things happening to the environment and we're really not taking good care of our environment. If you guys agree with me, give me a thumbs up. Are we take you give me a thumbs up if you think we're taking care of our environment um, as, as not just Americans, but like as a world, like, do you think the world globally are we taking care of our, our environment? Put in the comments, yes or no, okay? Just let me know if you guys think we're doing a good job with that. And if you don't, you can also put the reason why you think we're not doing such a good job with that. I personally will tell you guys my opinion. I don't think we're doing a good job. I think that we've just been trying to take, take, take from the environment. Um, and so the environment now is basically like, well, this is what you guys get, global warming. You know, this is what's happening here. And it's we ha we're having a warm time, right? Um, so yeah, I it's Miss, Miss Peace. Here says, no, she doesn't think we're taking care of the environment. So I have a lot of no, yeah. Annette, thank you guys for participating in that little survey. Walter says, no, we're not. Now guys, also you can share what you think we can do. Um, let's talk about that. What can we do as individuals? There I go in my teaching mode. Like what can we do as individuals though to, to make a difference? Uh, from, my, from my level, from your level, what, what do you think we can do? What are some of the things? And, I want you guys to share them because you may help someone else with getting an idea that they might not have considered before, okay? So let's think about that together. Let's brainstorm. What are some things that we can do? Like, I'll say mine, right? Recycling, that's an important one to me. So what I do, one of the things that I do, 
that get on um on on people who live in my house get on their nerves is I keep these bottles, right? I keep these bottles and I recycle these bottles and these bottles are glass bottles. So if I buy like if I find a, a nice um, sauce or I'm I'm purchasing something in the store, um, right, and I want to keep the bottle because I can use the bottle to drink my water in. I don't have my water here right now, but I have a lot of these bottles that I recycle and that that we use. So that's one way that I would suggest if you want to become more environmental, um, being more green and help the environment from just an individual perspective. I would suggest doing something like that because, quite honestly, we're not gonna one person make the massive change that is needed but as individuals we can certainly do that and that will help us to feel well i believe that right um i feel good about myself when i'm saving these bottles even though people in my house are like what are we doing with all these bottles right um so miss peace said we should make our homes more eco-friendly definitely most definitely in any way that we can one of the things i do i go around the house turning off every light and not just because of environment, but because I'm trying to save some money. <laughs> but yeah, turning off the lights um, in our homes, right? Making our homes more eco-friendly, setting up things in a certain way, using eco-friendly items, right? Uh, I think that's part of what Miss Peace means, if you want to expound on that. But yeah, make finding things, uh, uh, using things in your home that are more friendly for the environment. I cannot stand plastic. They put plastic, you guys see now they're finding plastic in the ocean and these poor fish and all these, um, you know, these, um, you know, whales and things, they're, they're having to deal with all the plastic um, all around. I used to live, I used to live in Bali, Indonesia for a couple of years um, of my life. I lived recently, I would say it was 2015, 2014 to 2016, I lived in Bali on and off. And I had a Jamaican restaurant there, the first Jamaican restaurant in Indonesia Oh, thank you, Hubsters. I got some water. Um, delicious. I needed that too. Um, the first Indonesian, the first Jamaican restaurant in Bali was uh, me and my husband. We went there and we did this crazy thing and we opened up this restaurant and it was nice. It was a nice vibe, but we ended up coming back. Um, but in Bali, the reason that I was, that's the reason why I was there, but in Bali, they have a real issue um, with plastic and with um, garbage, there is nowhere to put it anymore, right? So a lot of people are trying to um, come up with ways to get rid of and dispose of the garbage. If you guys know of anything that's going on, please put in a chat as well about the environment that we can help to get more awareness. Uh, Walter says, encourage more green spaces. That is great, yes. More green spaces, more gardens, um, utilizing spaces so that we can, um, you know, um, What's the word I'm looking for? There's a word that is escaping me right now, but I totally agree with you, Walter. That's a really good one. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Ms. Peace also says, take advantage of, our, of your government incentive to transform your home to energy efficiency. Yeah, and a lot of people now are also doing, um, in the States, they're doing the, uh, using the sunlight. They're putting that thing on the top of their roof. There was a word escaping me again. Um, somebody help me. What's the name of that thing that you, solar. Yes, solar energy. Right, we're using utilizing more solar energy instead of utilizing this um, man-made stuff that we are using. Hey, welcome, Salama, Shalama. Am I saying that right, Darian? Welcome to the party. All right, guys. So very good. Thank you all so much for participating. Please continue to do that. We're gonna jump on to solar system. Yes, that's it right there. <laughs> solar energy. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Let's 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 run on to the next one here. I love the participation. Love you guys um, speaking on it. Um, let's talk guys about financial wellness. So when it comes to financial wellness, guys, this is really when we're thinking about our personal satisfaction and security, right? With our financial circumstances. Okay. So do we feel comfortable about our financial circumstances? Are we happy about it? You know, this is also including, uh, financial processes such as budgeting, income, savings, um, smart financial decisions, investing, and debt management, right? These are the things that are encompassing in the wellness, um, the financial wellness section. Now, something that you guys might know or might not, because some of y'all have been watching me for a while, so every now and then I share different things about myself and about my history. I was an accountant for many years. <laughs> so I was crunching numbers, doing budgeting and all that stuff, and it wasn't a job that I necessarily enjoyed. 
um, this is more like my speed, right? Communications, um, nutrition, all of that. I finally found my passion, right? And so I'm happy about that. But I used to be in the in the finance industry, and I'm telling you, it's a very high pressured industry um, because thinking about money and budgeting, even as an organization, is challenging, much less as an individual, right? So for organizations, it's quite difficult to balance budgets and to, um, you know, make large purchases and to make sure that your investments are, you know, um, gonna go well, right? And so it's not easy and I've had to see it and I've done quite a bit of accounting for quite a bit of companies, um, some pretty good companies as well. And so I've seen quite a lot on that, on that spectrum. And then I have my own personal life um, where I have seen myself doing budgeting. I have seen myself trying to save. I've seen myself trying to make, you know, strong financial decisions. And I found myself in situations where I'm also like, oh Lord, where that money gonna come from, right? So when we have that financial stress um, coming on us and we are not secure financially, it can really cause a huge problem for us in our wellness. And so guys, as we're talking about the dimensions of wellness, again, I want you guys to make a note um, I want you guys to make a note of this as one of the areas, the goal of us talking about this is so you can recognize that this is one of the areas that can affect your wellness. All the things we're talking about today, these are all areas that can affect your wellness, okay? Because it's not, like I said before in the beginning, if you're just tuning in, it's not just about what you eat and if you're exercising, it's about these other areas of wellness, okay? So your financial wellness is something that is very hard to deal with if there is nowhere to go, right? If you only get a set amount of income and if you only have a set amount of, um, if you have a set amount of bills and if your income is, you know, less than your expenses, obviously it's gonna be a challenge. So the goal would be to get, um, if you're able to find some way to get a hold of your financial um, situation, right? It would definitely make a difference in your wellness because I don't know if you guys heard a lot of couples that's the main reason why a lot of couples break up is because of money, is <laughs> because of finances. That's how stressful it is that you'd leave your man or leave your woman over coins, right? <laughs> and it's not usually just coins, right? It's money. It's like the thing that causes the most issues in marriages, the most issues in relationships and friendships, right? You lend somebody some money and they don't want to pay you back. Like finances is a really big thing. And so we cannot underestimate it and think that it's not a part of our wellness. It's a part of our wellness. This is a part of the wellness dimension, guys. Your finances, what you're doing with it, whether it's healthy or not, is playing into your wellness. All right, so my encouragement there is do the best you can with what you have and reach out for help because you'll be surprised. Like as an accountant, I'll have people back in the days when I was practicing, well, I only stopped like four years ago or three years ago, um, but people would ask me questions, right, about budgets because it's, it's easy for me to throw a budget together because I've done it. I've done a million budgets, right? I've balanced a lot of, um, you know, uh, books. I've seen a lot. I've done bank statements, reconciliations. I've done all of that stuff, cash flows. Um, and so, you know, ask for help. You'd be surprised, right? Um, if you guys want my help, I'll help you, but it won't be a fun thing for me to help you with because it's not one of the things that I truly enjoy to do. Um, but I would certainly give you some guidance and some tips if you really want. All right, guys. But financial wellness is really, really one of the key areas I want you guys to look at. It's one of the main reasons why a lot of people, um, you know, end up with a lot of mental stress. Okay. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. Okay. Um, Let's move on. Guys, put your questions in. Put your thoughts as well. If you have any experience with any of these wellness areas and you want to share your thoughts or ideas for people, please do not be shy, guys. All right. We's all family here. Um, and please share this on your page, okay? Intellectual wellness. So intellectual wellness basically encourages, you know, being creative, giving you the creative ability to find and expand your knowledge and skills in order to promote personal growth. Okay, guys, so good evening, Sharon. Good evening, Dawn. Um, Dawn, it's your first time. Happy to have you, lady. Um, guys, so in terms of your intellectual wellness, right, it's, it's an area for you to get creative. It's an area for you to start thinking outside the box. Um, but sometimes it's just very simple as how are you talking to yourself, self-talk. You see the list that I have here, right? Setting goals for yourself, managing your time, critical thinking. Um, uh, Dawn, I see your question. I'll come to you in a second. Um, studies, studying skills, if you, if you happen to be studying, 
guys, y'all know I'm always in school, right? I'm always, <laughs> although I got my master's and stuff like that, I don't know if I'll ever do a PhD, but like I'm continuing to learn as I go. Why? Because of you guys, right? Because I like to educate and I like to learn for myself to be comprehensive, to be able to have the knowledge to really share. So those are some of the areas that you can increase your intellectual wellness is to take classes over, over the pandemic season. Ask my husband how many certifications I got. Like there are three big ones that I did, but there were multiple small little things that I was doing just to kind of keep my mind fresh, right? Because at one point I did not have my contract. My contract was um, was sort of put on pause because of COVID. So I didn't have my contract and I wasn't taking any clients at that time either. So I was literally on like a lull space. So I was doing a lot of reading. I was doing a lot of studying. And so if you happen to be in a situation like that, guys, don't wait for something to come up. Start working on whatever it is that you can work on, right? Start taking any kind of classes that you can take. Um, and there's tons of free ones out there too, right? Um, but this is an area for you to, you know, use your creativity, you know, um, start learning new things, right? And I really want to encourage you to do that because self-knowledge, um, things that cause you to like look at yourself and look at your intellect really does does help. Now I'm gonna go um, into the chat box for a second so we can chat look a bit. Let's take this off the screen, guys, and talk a little bit about some of your questions. I see a question here. So Don Stewart says, "How do I begin at 56 with no savings?" Um, so Don, let's let's talk. Do you have a uh, any type of income coming in, Don? Um, if you have any kind of income coming in, you can certainly save from that income. Uh, and also, what are your income and what are your expenses, right? How much is your income uh, greater than your expenses? Because if it is, you can save, all right? That's the first thing to note, okay? I have, um, <laughs> I don't want to disclose my business, but listen, I have saved and I have also eliminated debt from my life. So when it comes to credit cards and things like that, it's not something that I fool around with. We've all been there where we've, you know, spend money and things like that, but the goal is also to manage your spending, right? So that's one of the things. Now, I don't know if that applies to you, Don, but that's one of the things I would say is to try to eliminate your debts, if you have any, and also try to um, cut, cut some corners. You know, I am one of these people, guys. <laughs> I recycle a lot, like I said before, but I repeat a lot of things too. I'm not big on jewelry, so I don't, I have a lot of some jewelry, but it's not like, you know, expensive. I'm not a name brand person. I used to work for um, Louis Vuitton. I had, you know, some items that I got for peanuts when I worked there. Um, but I don't, I'm not a label person. I don't need to have a label. I don't need to, I do like Chanel <laughs> products, but I don't even own a Chanel bag. I don't own a, 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 what do you call these red bottoms? I don't own any of that stuff. I like plain and Jane quality things, but I bargain, I get things on sale. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your girl, I'm not cheap, but I'm certainly not, I'm frugal. I'm certainly not trying to spend my money on material things. Now, if you guys know me, I do like a trip. So I like to travel and, like, and I like experiences and I like education. So my money, if I'm spending on it, I'm spending it on education. I'm spending it on things that I can actually give me a return. All right. So that's just a little bit of my thoughts and what what i'm thinking so Kerrick is saying read books definitely a good one and in terms of that guys nighttime is a really good time because it also helps with your sleeping right so when you go to bed at night right before you um you turn off the tv early like an hour or two before you go to bed turn off the tv get a nice book i have several i'm, I'm obsessed with books okay somebody keep telling me stop buying books stop buying books and then i also have the audiobook that i listen to sometimes i gotta cut that off because it's, it's a little bit too much money at this point but um Guys, get some good books, okay? Get some good books, and that's another good way to keep your intellect going because you learn a lot of stuff, and you can actually have great conversations um, as well when you're doing that. Lisa Marie, Chin King, hey. <laughs> lots of smiley face, lots of fire. <laughs> I appreciate you, Lisa. Thanks for being here on our YouTube channel. Big up yourself, all you YouTube channel, all you YouTube people. Dawn, yes, I work for myself and I'm a, I'm a seamstress. Ooh, I love that. So um, so then I guess when it comes to that, then Dawn, um, I'm not sure how many clients you have. Uh, I, I have a, a degree, my, my bachelor's is in marketing. So when it comes to your business and branding yourself and getting your, the word out about what, what you're doing and things like that, being a seamstress, 
I'm not exactly sure who your clients are, but you know, um, trying to expand on how much clients you have. Uh, although I don't know if you have the time to take on an extra 10, if you already have 10, I'm not really sure the situation, but maybe increasing your income in that, that space. But also guys, one of the other things you have to consider as, as, um, business owners, you have to increase your prices. Okay. So as the years go by, your prices should increase. Okay. So your price don't stay the same for 10 years. Okay. You should increase, increase your prices. Okay. My coaching hat is coming on. You want to increase your prices. Okay. So the same dress that you made 10 years ago or five years ago, it should not cost you the same. The person should not pay you the same to make that cost of living. So you have to account for that. So you want to increase your prices. I'm pretty sure you're a great seamstress, Don. So increase your prices um, and find a way to cut costs as well in other areas. All right. Snuggles. I see eyeballs. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> um, you and me both. I'm not sure what I said when, when you said that there. Um, and I'm here. I thought you were a label blank. Oh Lord. After mentioning the name Chanel. No, I'm, I'm really not. I'm really not. Um, I like Chanel, but I don't own any Chanel. All right. I, like I said, I spend my money on things like food, <laughs> things that I'm going to see a return from. All right. Um, spend wisely. Exactly. Exactly. That's what it is. We have to spend wisely, guys, because our financial freedom, our financial wellness is very important to us, especially just as like for me, I used to be um, I came from I wouldn't say that I, we were poor necessarily. But I think when you don't have a big house and you don't have tree car and everything like that in your family, we had the one car. It was me and my six, six of us. And we were in the one car stuffed up right? With my, my father and my, my mom driving, you know, in Jamaica up this hill, trying to, you know, like with our little house, you know, and we shared rooms and everything like that. And, you know, it wasn't easy for us as most Jamaican people have their struggles and living together and whatever the situation is, right? We, we all grew up a certain type of way. Not everybody was born with the silver spoon in their mouth, so to speak, right? Not everybody has the luxury of having you know, X, Y, Z. Did I see all my school friends when I went to Bishop? I used to go to Bishop Gibson High School, um, all girl Catholic school in Mandeville. When I used to go to that school and I was like, man, my dad was a tailor. So he would make my uniform, <laughs> right? Cutting costs and things like that. So we have to find ways to spend wisely. So I saw my parents do it also. I saw my parents being really frugal. So I had a great example, you know, from them and we weren't well off. Okay. We had a little farm and so we would sell animals. That was how we make our money in conjunction with my dad, you know, being a tailor in the, in the community. So, um, now, you know, I'm, I've worked, I'm still not rich <laughs> and it's fine because I'm content. You know, the scripture says in all, wherever you are, in what space you are, learn to be content in certain, certain things. So you don't have to be rich as long as you are happy, you know, as long as you have peace. I think that's the most important thing too, is to define success for yourself. What does success mean to you? What does financial freedom means to you? Like, is it just, being able to pay your mortgage and to be able to go out every now and then take a trip once a year. What does it mean to you? Cause for me, that's kind of what it looks like. I just need to be able to pay whatever living expenses I have and be able to take a trip and have a little savings. That's what it means to me. I don't need to have, like I said, the labels. I don't need to have the red bottoms. Okay. I don't need to have all that. I need peace in my life. That's it. I could live barefoot <laughs> on an Island, uh, rocking a t-shirt and some, some shorts for the rest of my life. I really can. I don't need this watch. I don't need this, these couple of pieces of jewelry you see at me have on. I don't need any of it. You know, I'm always wearing my knobs because I'm not, not big on all of that. Right. But everybody has to define what it is for them. You know, that's me. I can only talk for myself. Right. Um, God brought me here. Go ahead, Don. Yes. Um, thank you for sharing your story, Don. And he will take care of you for sure. Cause that's the thing to know. It's like, if God brought you there, he will take care of you. Right. Um, so you read a, a book at night so you can fall asleep before your brain retain what you just read. What kind of question? <laughs> you're retaining it. Guess why? Because when you're laying down, your body will retain it. Your, your mind will retain it. Why? Because that's how the mind works. Even, you know, your mind at night is doing a couple of things. Your mind is basically taking everything you learned during the day and organizing it. Okay. That's what it's doing. The brain is organizing everything. And what you read the night before, sometimes you actually dream about it. Right. So <laughs> snuggles, you're funny. What can I say? Um, the library is another good option. Yes. Thank you. So guys, you don't have to actually purchase the book. You can go to the library and rent 
the book. Just make sure you bring them back because if you don't bring them back, they're going to charge you. All right. So get you a library card. I have one and I have a library pretty much almost across the street from where I live that I can go to and get books. I don't even know if they're open because I, I really haven't been there in a while. But yeah, if you cannot afford to buy the books and if you're buying books, guys, you can get used books on Amazon for peanuts. Okay. $3, $2. You don't have to buy the book brand new. Okay. So think about that too. I love, I love you guys sharing all these great ideas. I'm going to read a few more then I'm going to jump off and go into the, um, go into the, the next one. All right. So what are the keys? What are the keys in marketing? If you don't mind me asking keys, when you say keys in marketing, uh, price is important place where you're placing yourself. It depends on what you have. So if you're doing a product, um, that matters versus if you're doing a service, right? Um, I didn't know you guys wanted um, business tips from me. I never exposed the fact that I'm a business person, you know, because I'm so engulfed in my wellness and nutrition that that side of me, I've been doing that for so many years that I've actually um, just used it for myself and my own business. And I'm not even doing that uh, as much as I should be. Um, but if you do want more talks, maybe I can put something, let me know exactly what you mean, Snuggle, and I can probably throw that in the chat for you. Mm -hmm. When you mean keys, what do you mean exactly? And is it for a product or for uh, a, a service? So why should your price increase as the years go by, if you don't mind me asking? If your price, a lot of questions. Um, your price should increase because cost of living. Your cost of living is increasing, um, and so your price should increase. And also, I would hope that for everybody who is providing a service that they're educated, like me, for example, my price will always increase because I'm educating myself. I'm learning more. So if you work with me, you're gonna get, you're gonna get a gamut of stuff. You're not coming to me because you're just gonna get like the generic, right? You're not just gonna get the generic thing. You're gonna get so much more. And you know, when you say price increase, it might not necessarily be by doubling the price. It may just be an extra fifteen dollars or ten dollars, depend on your price point. Okay, guys. So keep that in mind. That's something that you know. It is what it is. You know what I mean? I'm not telling you to rob people. You have to sit down and see what did it cost you when I had a, cl I had a clothing line also. I know. <laughs> um, real business woman, right? Tessa. So I had a clothing line. And so when I got, when I had my clothing line, if we don't finish today, guys, we'll finish up next week. Seems as you guys have a lot of questions about this business stuff. So I'll, I'll share. Um, so I had a clothing line. It was called Be Free. And the clothing line was basically, um, when I lived in Indonesia and I was getting my restaurant build out, I decided to pursue um, that because I was waiting on them to do the build out. Indonesian people, I love them, but they are slow. They tell you this project is going to take two months. It takes six months or a year, even more. All right. So while that was happening, I always had a desire because my dad was a tailor. My mom used to sew clothes. I always wanted to you know, make clothes. So I decided to go into that. Now, what it took for me to get that done, I had to go find the fabric. I had to go um, you know, on my little scoopy at the time, ride to the location, buy the fabric, hire the production house, you know, um, get the buttons, all these different things play a role in my cost, right? So once I had my cost, I sat and I looked, this is how much it cost me to make this one dress. Now, how am I going to uh, put a markup on this so I can make some type of profit? And so I had to sit with a formula and there's a formula. If you're in this industry, you know, there's a formula that you can use whether it's one times the amount of cost, two times the amount of cost, you basically add that on. But you also look to see, is, would I pay that for it? You know, would I, is this worth $50? You know, so some things you lose on or you might not make as much and some things you make more money on. So you're basically, um, you know, uh, trying to get your money back, but you're trying to also make a profit, all right? And so you have to come up with a formula that works for you and your business if you're doing you know, a particular product. All right. And so that's what that is. But your prices should increase each year because you should be educating yourself. You should be providing more to your customers. Um, your skills should be better, but also for the simple fact that, you know, it's um, um, cost of living. All right. You said you don't do name brands. No, not really. Not, I, I couldn't tell you the lie. I don't go buy expensive stuff. <laughs> It's very expensive, these things, guys. I worked for the corporate office of Louis Vuitton and I saw the prices and I was like, what are people doing? Spending their money on $700 bags. I own one piece um, that was it was expensive, but I didn't pay that money for it because I was an employee. So I would go to the corporate sales and I would um, get it at a discount, right? I didn't buy anything full price. Um, 
I paid for my Fendi bags that I had at the time when I worked there because it was a clunk, it's a group of group of um, LVMH is a company I worked for, and they have brands underneath them. Fendi was one, Marc Jacobs, Louis was one of them, and so we got invited to the sales. And when I go to the sales, I'm paying ten dollars for a pair of shoes or fifteen dollars for, but it's employees only, and it was a massive discount. That was how I owned any of those, and I don't have any of those anymore because I gave them all away because I really don't care about brands like that. Um, so why would you cut costs if you have a good product? Why cut cost? Why don't you just raise the price if it's a good people will buy? Do name brand people cut costs if the product is good or do they just charge more? So guys, I was in the luxury business, like I said, worked for the corporate office of Louis Vuitton and they never had a sale for, for, for people, right? The employees had access to the sales, but they didn't give public sales, right? And they just assumed if you can afford it, you buy it. If you can't, don't buy it. That was their approach, right? Um, I don't have the answers for, for all of that. I'm gonna get out of this area, guys, because you guys got me in this financial wellness section and asking me mad questions, which is good. Um, how much land does your house sit on? Lord of mercy, who just asked me so much question? Bright and fiesty. Why do you not think you have a silver spoon? <laughs> Snuggles mega banyo, trust me. Yeah, your question then. Carrie and we spend too much money on material things. Exactly. And that's why I just don't do it, right? That's why I just don't do it. Um, guys, thank you for your comments. But Snuggles is eating up my, my box here. I'm gonna jump on and keep going here because Snuggles is really trying to um ask me all sorts of questions. Um, that person's probably joking around. So like, let's let's keep it going, guys. All right, let's add this back to the screen. So intellectual wellness, guys, make sure you're reading your books and stuff like that. Um, and getting your intellectual wellness up so that you can, you know, feel confident about yourself and feel good about yourself. Because when you feel, when you're having an intellectual conversation with somebody, it's not gonna make you feel, um, you know, it's gonna help you to feel like, you know, listen, I can hold this conversation. I can have this conversation with this person. I'm able to think, I'm able to mentor somebody. If you need to mentor, I'm a mentor for young girls. Um, you you know, you're able to manage your time. These are, This is what is a factor in intellectual wellness, right? You're able to think critically, all right? Um, and of course it builds your self-confidence as I said, said before, all right? So it's not just reading, it's a whole gamut of things. And, you know, these are some of the things that are involved in it. Occupational wellness, guys, is really promoting a personal satisfaction in your job. Like, so wherever you're working, you want to have like a balanced lifestyle. Okay. So you're working with people that you love. And even if you don't love them, you have a good sense of um, wellness there. And you don't, if you don't have, uh, if you're not happy at your job, if you're not happy where you are working, I always tell people strategically find a way to get out because the longer you stay, the more it's going to impact your health and wellness. And we don't want that. Okay. We want to stay well. We want to be um, emotionally well. And especially for a place that you're spending eight hours, sometimes 10 hours, sometimes 12 hours, depending on your job. Nurses, I know my sister's a nurse. Sometimes, you know, she'll do the 12 hour shift or whatever like that. So guys, you want to make sure that your occupation, wherever you are, that you're happy. And if you're not happy, my story, I did not enjoy doing accounting. I just knew it wasn't for me. And God told me that. And, you know, so I eventually made my plan. I had a whole bunch of other reasons why I wanted to leave corporate America as well, um, because I just felt like the restrictions, the nine to five and all that stuff. But ultimately, you know, it was for health reasons, but it was also because I wanted to do something different. Right. And so I wanted to do something that I truly, truly loved and cared about. And wellness, nutrition was very natural for me. It was something that I had already been doing. I was always the one at the dinner table talking to people about what are you eating? What is that? Why are you eating that? That's not good for you. <laughs> so naturally, it just felt like a natural progression. And again, I was pushed into it. I listened to God. If you tell me to do something, I do it, whatever it is, right? So that's why I got into it. But when it comes to your occupational wellness, guys, you know, I found a way to get out. I made my plan. I basically, um, you know, started school. And while I was in school, I ended up leaving the job and took a part-time job doing, um, doing nutrition ed right? And then from there, slowly build myself up to where I'm at right now. I'm still not at my plateau. There's more to go, but I'm very happy with my, my occupation. I did not enjoy being in an environment. Some of the environments that I worked in was not good. I did not enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't just the people, it was the work, but also just when you're not happy with your job and it's just not a good thing for your wellness. All right. So focus on that guys as well. That's one of the things that I hope you're writing down 
occupational wellness, very important. And then the one that you guys know that I'm always talking about is the physical wellness. Okay, we have, I think, two more after this and then we're gonna wrap it up. So physical wellness recognizes the need for a healthy lifestyle that includes consistent physical activity, nutritious foods, quality sleep, and avoiding high-risk behaviors in order to maintain good health. What's high-risk behavior, guys? High-risk behavior is doing drugs, um, drinking excessively, um, you know, and just risky behaviors, being promiscuous and things like that. That's ris considered risky behavior as well. Uh, and so guys, this is one of the areas obviously that I preach about constantly. Um, it's really about making sure you are eating well, you're sleeping well. You know, you see here the seven pillars of wellness and the seven pillars of wellness include, I'm sorry, seven pillars of health include your eating, what you're thinking, you know, are you connected to someone, right? Are you moving? Are, are you self-soothing, right? I believe in self-soothing so much, especially since COVID, I've been self-soothing, right? Sleeping, making sure you're getting to bed at a certain time. And then of course, sometimes you may need a detox. I just did one recently. Like I just did like a seven, uh, seven day juice cleanse or whatever it was. Sometimes you need to do that. All right, guys, but this is an area that I know I'm always talking about, so I'm not going to spend too much time on here. But again, ask your questions. Um, let me know what you guys are thinking, all right? And put your comments down here. I'll be happy to get into it, all right? Um, so I'll see. I'll get to the comments in a second. Let's see if I can keep going here, guys. All right, so yeah, eat, eat well, sleep well, move. I do a... Um, my goal for myself when it comes to fitness, right? Set a fitness goal, guys. Let's talk about that real quick. Set a fitness goal for yourself, okay? Um, a lot of times when you say, oh, tomorrow I'm going to do something, what does something mean? Interpret that. What does something mean? Does something mean I'm going to go for a walk? Does something mean I'm going to lift some dumbbells? What, what exactly does that mean? You want to define what it is. When you, when, when you talk, when, when I do my health coaching, right? I talk to people about setting what's called SMART goals. And you can use this formula for your whole life. Setting SMART goals. You have to be specific. It needs to be measurable, which means you should be able to quantify. Okay, SMA. You want to make sure that you can actually attain that goal, right? And S-M-A-R. Um, what's the other one? I'm going to put it in the chat after because my, I'm drawing a blank because I just saw the time. But guys, Make sure that it's it's you can be specific. That's really what I wanted to share anyway. Make sure that your goal is, is specific, that you're not just saying a random thing, okay? That you want to make sure your goal is smart, okay? It's, it's measurable, but also that it's specific. If you are not specific, you are not going to attain it. So for me, I said to myself, every day, I want to run two miles every morning, right? Monday through Friday. On the weekends, I'll do less or more. It's really up to me, right? So that's my goal. And so every morning, what do I do? It took me a while to get into the routine of it, but now if I don't do it, I actually can feel my body like, what's going on? You didn't, and now I don't beat myself up if I don't get to do it. You know what I do? I walk instead, All right? So I still go out there and I still, my body misses the air and misses the, the sunlight if I don't do it every day, okay? So you get yourself in some type of a routine. So you have to get specific, otherwise it won't actually happen, all right? That's one thing I wanted to share with you guys. Let's run on here. We have two more and then we're gonna be done. Um, we have just a few more minutes, so I'll be quick. Social wellness, guys, about developing a sense of connection, belonging, and a support system. This includes developing meaningful relationships and also celebrating events, right? This year, we weren't able to actually um, get to the, um, like, I when I graduated in 2019, uh, I wasn't able to walk the stage because of COVID, right? I was able to walk the stage because of COVID. And obviously that sucks, right? So you want to be able to find time to celebrate. Do Zoom things if you can right now because that social in, that social interaction is very important. Even if you can't physically see somebody, just having the conversation with them will actually make a difference for your life. So I want to encourage you to do that. Still maintain your social, especially as Caribbean people. We like to get together with each other and you know whether it be going to church or whatever it is, whatever area it is um, that you are able to be social, do that. Even doing volunteer work and things like that can be very fulfilling, all right? So you wanna connect with people. That's another thing that's gonna help with your wellness. Remember, all of these tips I'm giving you, all these um, dimensions of wellness, it plays into your overall, overall wellness. And, um, and so that's what I want you guys to keep thinking about. This, If I work on this area, it's gonna help me. 
Spiritual wellness is the last one, guys, recognizing the need for a sense of purpose, okay? Um, and having meaning in your life, right? So you you want to be able to do to uphold that. You want to be able to uh, uphold your personal values um, or anything that you happen to believe in, right? I believe in Jesus Christ. And so that's for me, that's my connection. But it's also about maintaining a healthy, vibrant, loving relationship with God, you, you know, for me, Jesus Christ, right? Um, and with others. So that's really uh, an important aspect of your life as well. And for a lot of us um, Christians and a lot of us um, folks who have that connection, it sometimes brings us back to our center, especially when the world is so crazy, so much is going on, it's something that we can rely on. All right, so I want you guys to also keep, keep that in mind. Think about humanity as well. You see this guy sitting here seeking human kindness. That's a huge part of having that um, spiritual wellness um, and being connected to loved ones. Now, I know you guys do have questions. I really appreciate you guys all being here. Um, I'm just going to go over the um, thing here, the SMART goals real, real quick before I go with you guys. So specific guys, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Okay. So SMART, I lost my thoughts there. So make sure that it's specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's relevant, and that is time-based. Okay. If you don't set like a time frame for it, it's not going to happen also. All right. So those are your smart goals. Make sure your goals are smart. Okay. When you're setting them, if you don't set smart goals, nine times out of 10, somehow they just don't happen. All right. So let's see if I can go through the comments. I'm going to sift through snuggles because they're long <laughs> and I'm not sure. I don't, I want to get through, don't feel no way in the snuggles because I am going to read through them, but I, I see that they're just very long and I want to kind of get through some of these here. Um, Lord have mercy, yes, Snuggles. You had trouble, Micaiah. I'm seeing some of your comments. Miss Peace, um, peace. Thank you, Deborah, for the great topic and inf uh, information. Is there another way to contact you? I have to go now. Uh, I'll put it in here. You're probably already gone. I will make a note and um, respond to you. But you guys can reach me on My Temple Wellness. Okay, this is my website here. If you go there, you can um, send me an email directly from there. Um, or you can hit me up on social media. People be sending me inboxes and stuff like that on social media, on Facebook, and also on Instagram. Um, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, I don't know. Don't use that to send me messages, though. I would say use use my social media, which is so uh, Instagram and Facebook, or send me a, a um, an email. <laughs> okay. My email I have is you can email me at Deborah at mytemplewellness.com. Okay. So you can email me there. All right, guys. Um, so we are pretty much a wrap right now. Uh, what do you think about a 28 day detox? Carrie Ann, tell me more. Um, and I'll tell you, uh, what I think in terms of what do you mean? Are you are talking about just drinking juice, drinking just water. Um, are you using raw foods? There's multiple types of detoxing, uh, programs. And so depending on which one it is, I, if you guys haven't noticed with me, I'm, I like to be very specific because I don't treat each person the same. Each person is a unique person. So each person, um, you know, if you're trying to do a 28 day detox, it, it matters your weight. It matters so much more. It's, you know, sometimes folks ask me a question and I ask another question is because in order for me to give you the right answer or, or a proper answer that's um, fitting for you. It's good for me to, the more information you give me, the more I can actually help. All right. Um, and you don't have to put it here, Carrie Ann. You can always inbox me separately and I'll be happy to give you some information about that. Um, I am going to be opening up my services. I've closed uh, most of my health, my health coaching uh, business for a little bit because um, I've been working on something. So for those people who've been asking about um, joining, I'm going to have limited seats or uh, limited availability because I don't like to take on 25 clients at the same time. So I have a set group of small clients and I work with them separately, individually rather. And then I also do like group coaching, which I'm putting together something for group coaching right now. Um, I don't know exactly when I'm gonna launch that, but um, it'll be specific to your tribe. Um, so if you are interested in, let's say hypertension, I'm gonna do something specific towards that. I'm building everything out right now and it takes a lot of work and I want it to be perfect for you guys. So you can keep your eyes and ears open about that. You can follow me so you can see how you could participate in those type of things. Um, because I think that's one way to really get your wellness level up um, overall, you know, try to get healthy, whatever it is, uh, is to work with someone, but also do it in group settings as well. 
because the group settings can be very beneficial, especially because people are sharing. It's a private group setting. You know, you sign documents and everything <laughs> to make sure that you're not um, very professional, guys. I don't play those games. I, I certainly don't. I make sure that you are protected and covered. All right. But we could talk more about that if you guys are interested. Email me and I'll be happy to share. Dawn, thank you so much. I feel different. Oh, that's good. I hope different good, Dawn. I hope different good. Um, yeah, I love having you guys out here. This is really great. Um, Bobcat, how can one contact you regarding health issues? My website is the best way. From my website, you can email me. I got to jump off. I'm going to only stay on for another two minutes. Um, so guys, if you do want to reach me, let me put it in here right now. You guys can email me at this email address I'm about to put in the chat. This is my professional business email address that you can send me, Deborah, at mytemplewellness.com. You can email me there directly um, or go to my website. Um, follow me on one of these social media sites and inbox me. People reach out to me like that all the time. And let me know you saw me on jamaicans.com because, you know, folks on jamaicans.com, not saying I gave you guys preferential treatment, but um, <laughs> maybe I do. I don't know. You're going to have to find out. <laughs> Carrie Ann, I will send you an email. Yes, please do, um, guys. Please do, please do. So Snuggles, I'm going to read your last message, all right? This, is, this, this might not be one of your trouble messages. People need access to the type of food you eat. I specifically, I, I specifically exactly where you get your products from. Um, yeah, so great question. I shop at multiple supermarkets, and I also support local vendors and um, farmers markets. So I go to, I mix it up. I go to Whole Foods, I go to Trader Joe's. Um, Whole Foods is a little pricey sometimes, but they have some of the things I need organic. I buy a lot of organic foods, especially the um, Dirty Dozen. If you guys don't know about the Dirty Dozen, let me know. I'll do a, a little thing on the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. So I look for specific foods from certain places and I go where, it's, where I get the best and also the best price. So I shop around. I take a day or so and that's my day for shopping. Um, for food because I care about my family and what I put in my body. I I don't mind making multiple stops. For some people, it might be too much, but for me, it's fine. I also like to mix it up and have exotic foods in my in my house. I don't live in Jamaica no more or Bali, so I don't have access to some of these foods that are so easily you know found. I saw um, somebody posted recently a post of a sour sap or sweet sap, and it was thirty three dollars for two little something in a, <laughs> in a little thing, right? So I try to find my my stuff from different places. All right, so farmers markets are great. I shop at Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, and sometimes the local um, supermarket in my town if I'm running out of something. Always, I do shop organic again for the Dirty Dozen. And again, let me know if you guys want to know exactly what that is. Great question, Snuggles. <laughs> all right, Gay Davis, thank you. Of course, it's my pleasure. I'm so happy to have you guys all out here. Um, great information this evening. Oh, thank you, Carrie Ann. My pleasure, guys. I love all of you. I'm going to run on because I'm a little bit over my time here. Um, no, I'm not located in far. I'm located in New York. Yeah, New York. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you guys for being here. Um, please share and subscribe to our channel. Okay. So you guys could look up easy Brian and see if you want to follow that channel as well. What is the dirty dozen? All right, Ava. So I will talk about that next week. I'll try to incorporate that in my lesson for next week. I will talk about the dirty dozen. Um, and maybe I'll do something on detoxing or something like that for next week. All right. I always think about what I want to do for the week. Um, during the same week, <laughs> believe it or not, even though I have a list of options of topics because wellness is so broad. There's so much, as you can see from the PowerPoint, there's so many different areas. Um, and because now I've um, expanded my specialty to not just food and I'm uh, expanding into mental health and wellness and trauma, that's why I tend to have a lot more to share because um, it's just that much more that we have to look at and worry about. All right, Jennifer, thank you. That's going to be my last comment for tonight. Great information, of course. My pleasure, guys. I appreciate all of you. Please share this on your page and let other people know about these eight dimensions of wellness. They're all very important, okay? We don't want to neglect any of them. Obviously, physical, uh, which is, you know, the foods and exercising and our sleep and all that stuff, very important. But so are all the other areas, the financial, the social. When you lose connection with people, you know, which has seemed to be happening a lot lately. People are not connecting well anymore. People are getting offended by each other so much more frequently. And so relationships are, bro are broken and you don't realize how much those broken relationships are affecting you. All right. So guys, think about all the dimensions of wellness. Um, the eight dimensional of wellness are emotional, environmental, financial, intellectual, occupational, physical, social, and spiritual. 
make sure that all of those areas that you pay some attention to them and you know see if you are healthy in that area all right guys i love y'all i'm gonna walk good remember today's meatless monday try to eat um something that is um helpful for your body uh guys and i'll see you all next week i'll answer the questions i'll try to jump back in here and answer the questions Otherwise, um, I'll take some of your questions and make it into a, a live. All right. Okay. I'm ending the broadcast. Y'all take care. Okay. I don't know what. Good. Eat some of the veggies. All right. Bye, guys.